Kia ora, my name is Ross Ashman. I'm here with Paul James from the DIA. Um, Paul, thanks for joining me. Let's start with uh, what, what is the remit of DIA? Uh, Department of Term Affairs is a uh, quite a complex, diverse organisation. So we've got a number of core services, births, deaths, marriages, passports. So we touch every New Zealander. Uh, we house the National Library and Archives. So we look after New Zealand's documentary heritage. Look after 14 regulatory systems, includes anti-money laundering, um, gambling regulation, responsible for local government, and we've got programs of work around three waters and local government reform at the moment. Plus, uh, I'm the Government Chief Digital Officer, so uh, supporting the information. Yeah, big job, and I was going to ask you about that. Your role as the uh, GCDO, walk me through what that looks like day to day. So, um, what I find is that um, there's great appetite and energy in the New Zealand public sector for digital transformation, and the way we describe our job is that uh, we're looking to really put in place the building blocks uh, for others, remove the roadblocks for others. Uh, we look to um, transform uh, government services by working with and through the public sector. So the public sector is our key focus. Yeah, perfect. And um, I just caught you on stage, you spoke about trust, growth and inclusion, three massive topics there. Why are those three so important? Let's maybe start with, with trust. Look, I think um, people are increasingly aware and conscious that human-centred is the key to digital transformation. Uh, but we're trying to go deeper. We're trying to say uh, it's not just about the transaction being human-centred, but actually how do we um, think about uh, people and the fullness of it, community, and the things that make the most difference for government. It takes you to trust. Mm -hmm. If you don't have trust, you can't do anything. Uh, we've got to include everyone as government. That's our responsibility, so no one left behind. Um, and without trust and inclusion, you don't get growth. And mm. of course we want growth, but you have to build towards it off those foundational bedrocks of trust and inclusion. Yeah, and I also heard you say uh, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. Um, what are some of the barriers that you faced in, in trying to sort of deliver that? Look, we know quite a lot about inclusion in New Zealand. We've done a lot of work around it. So, for example, we know that 20% or one in five New Zealanders face some sort of digital exclusion. Uh, we know increasingly why, and it tends to be not just simply that they're not connected or they don't have devices, but it's also uh, they don't have the skills, they don't have the confidence, or they don't trust in mm. digital technology, or they face other ways of being excluded from economy and society. They either have disabilities or mental health issues. So actually, inclusion is really complex. So uh, we've got this simple picture, but there's a lot of complexity under it. Yeah, and one of the other things that's come up already multiple times is, is collaboration, and that's obviously key. Why do you think it's important to collaborate, whether that's cross-agency or even sort of cross-country? Look, we are all about collaboration. I say that digital transformation in government is a team game. Mm. Um, we might be the, the system coach, um, but it's played by lots of people and we'll only get there if we collaborate. New Zealanders' um, access to government does not run narrowly in the silos that we organise ourselves. So uh, their engagement with government doesn't sit just with one government department, it runs across them. Uh, the biggest problems, the biggest opportunities don't organise themselves around our government departments. Mm. So we have to organise ourselves around people, around customers, around problems. And we need to collaborate. Equally, we don't have enough money or people to do everything that we want to do. So we have to do it in smart, sensible ways that involves collaborating, leveraging, building interoperability, sharing knowledge. Collaboration is the key. And for our global members, what would be the one sort of lesson that they could take away from DIA's sort of recent body of work, do you think? Um, look, one of the things we really focus on is that the vision and the endpoint is clear, but there's no real roadmap to this. Mm. Um, pick a couple of things and focus on those. So for us, we've focused on uh, supporting cloud adoption by government departments, we've focused on inclusion, building a real depth of knowledge around that, and we've focused on digital identity. Mm. We've just said these are the things, it's not the only things, but those are the things we're going to focus on. So pick yep. some priorities and go for it. Perfect, sounds good. And uh, finally, we've had sort of north of about 200 executives join us today to talk innovation, big topic. Why are these events so important for the sector? Look, um, we all get caught up in our day-to-day -day jobs and the tasks and the, and the deadlines. Uh, there's huge benefit from stepping away, from having conversations, from connecting with people. I really uh, value the Public Sector Network as a, a great organisation that gives us those opportunities, so I'm always keen to get along. Perfect, really appreciate it. Thank you for your time today, thank you for your, your work, and uh, thank you.